It was the beginning of an era when Hindustan Times was inaugurated by Mahatma Gandhi on September 15, 1924. The first edition of the newspaper was published on September 23rd the same year. The paper's first home was a rented three-storey building in the Green Market near Old Delhi Railway Station. This decade began with Gandhi's nationwide launch of Satyagraha, his rousing call for Swaraj, and even saw some of the earliest protests against untouchability. Devdas Mohandas Gandhi, the fourth and the youngest son of the Mahatma and Kasturba Gandhi, joined the Hindustan Times in 1937 as managing editor. He held the position till his death in 1957. He was born in South Africa and returned to India with his parents. He joined the freedom movement almost immediately following in the footsteps of his father. The most significant convergence of Devdas Gandhi's editorial leadership and his staunch support for independent journalism came to the fore in 1941, the year when the now famous Hindustan Times contempt case left an indelible print on Indian journalism. This was a case which goes back to 1941, where uh, Devdas Gandhi, who was then the editor of uh, the Hindustan Times, was convicted. Uh, along with his reporter for contempt of court. Let's take a look at the timeline of the case. In August 1941, the British government opened a fund soliciting public subscriptions for the Second World War. While delivering a sentence in an unrelated case in Meerut, the then Additional Sessions judge said that the Governor of the United Provinces and the Chief Justice of the Allahabad High Court had asked judicial officers and litigants to raise funds for the war effort. The lawyers for the accused went on to pay 200 rupees to the judge. HT carried a news report at that time and a comment which said that if it is true that the new Chief Justice has issued a circular to judicial officers enjoining on them to raise contributions to the war funds, then he has done a thing which would lower the prestige of the courts in the eyes of the people. The paper was deeply critical of the British government's push to raise funds for the war from judicial officers. This editorial was also deeply critical of uh, judicial officers uh, being made to raise donations which were ostensibly uh, voluntary but uh, at the same time, um, uh, you know, given that they are judges, nobody wants to displease a judge and therefore it's hardly likely that the donations were going to be voluntary. The then Chief Justice, Sir Iqbal Ahmad, took a serious view of the report and the comment in the paper. He caused a contempt writ to be served in the newspaper's editor, printer, publisher and the concerned reporter. In court, Devdas Gandhi defended his reporter and refused to name the comment writer and said he would face imprisonment rather than pay a fine and go home when his reporter colleague would not. Devdas Gandhi's lawyer Tej Bahadur Sapru's arguments established the point that the Raj was not only being churlish, but more seriously, ignoring canons of judicial fairness and propriety, in that the Chief Justice was both prosecutor and judge rolled into one. The Hindustan Times contempt case will never make it to the great passages of World War II, but in its own minutiae, it holds the place of hubris in the rise and fall of power. If Devdas Gandhi was an exemplary editor, Mahatma Gandhi was a very involved reader of the paper. A prolific writer himself, the Mahatma contributed several pieces to the Hindustan Times on a variety of subjects, including on how to become an ideal peasant, caste system, ideal diet, khadi, among other things. So uh, he was a journalist, but at the same time, he was reporting on his on a national figure uh, who was also happened to be his father. How did he manage that? How, well, he alone knows how he managed it. I mean, I could see the stress on my mother sometimes, but he was a, a family man, like my grandfather. I know mm. him only as a. I know my grandfather. I know Mahatma Gandhi as a family man. Mm. It was interesting to be with my grandfather and all the time with my father who spoke of the moment hmm. and to be with a family person and I know them as family people and certain things I saw in a very natural way. The connection between the father of the nation and the Birlas went much beyond Hindustan times. Ghanshyam Das Birla had first met Gandhi in Calcutta in 1916, shortly after the Mahatma came back from South Africa. The relationship that developed then lasted for the rest of the Mahatma's life. Gandhi spent his final 144 days at what was then called the Birla House, where he was assassinated on January 30, 1948. A portion of the house is now Gandhi Smriti, a museum.